Hey Gunners, welcome back to another video and today we have a lot to talk about following Arsenal's 2-2 draw with Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarterfinals. So many different decisions to look at, individual performances and what we can expect in the second leg. But before I begin, if you could please smash that like button and smash the subscribe button, it would really help the channel out. So without further ado, let's begin. Big games call for big players and big performances and I think today Bukayo Saka really stepped up for us. He was one of our attackers who was always demanding the ball, always on the move and he created a moment of absolute brilliance. An absolutely fantastic strike into the bottom left hand corner which gave Neuer no chance. These are the moments we need from our big players in Europe and Bukayo Saka provided it. After a fantastic start, it was just what we needed. Bukayo Saka picked up a 7.3 sofa score rating, which shows how good he was with one goal, 0.23 expected assists, 55 touches and one key pass. So he was heavily involved in play. He really did give Alfonso Davies a tough time, one of the best left backs in world football. However, it won't be Davies he'll face up next week as he picked up a booking that means he'll be suspended for the second leg. So maybe we'll see even more of an impact from Bakayo at the Allianz. Now, the biggest talking point in the match. Was it a penalty on Bakayo Saka? And I'm going to look at it from separate angles to make sure that we can all come to a conclusive decision. So firstly, I'm going to play the clip over and over again in the background. And for me, look at Neuer's movement of his right leg. He clearly puts it towards Bukayo Saka and it doesn't matter that Saka's put his body where the leg is, it's the fact that Neuer makes that initial movement towards the ball and for me, blatant penalty. You can't do that. It doesn't matter even if Neuer didn't have any contact on Bukayo Saka or minimal contact, it's still a penalty. How can you move your body in that way and the referee doesn't even check the screen? It is just ridiculous. Another thing you can look at to show that it was definitely a penalty is the reaction of opposition players and pundits. Harry Kane himself said it's 50-50. If he was on my team, I would have said it's a penalty. And that alone just shows Bukayo Saka had every right to be frustrated. Because obviously, if you're on the opposition team, you're going to defend the decision that was made for your team. But the fact Kane didn't do that, it just shows that was a blatant penalty. And the final angle to look at is the way Neuer reacted. Look at his face. That is the face of a guilty man. He was almost expectant of the referee to go to the monitor and look at the decision. But anyway, the decision was made and it cost us the victory in the end. So I just want to know, Gunners, do you think it was a penalty? For me, 100% a penalty. Before moving on to the match itself, I want to just talk about two other decisions. One where we potentially got lucky and another where I, I don't know, this could be given as a red card any other day of the week. I do think Harry Kane had a brilliant game against Saliba and Gabriel, but for me, this was really, really stupid from him. The way he moved his elbow back into Gabriel, you could tell that it was intentional, but yet again, he escaped. And for me, I've seen those given as red cards before and Kane has a reputation for backing into players, looking at them and putting in a vicious elbow or moving his body in a way which hurts the other player. And for me, although it can be seen as nitpicking, any other referee could give another decision for that. So I don't know, Gunners, let me know, is this a red card? Anyway, let's swiftly move on to something we may have got away with. And it was when we had a goal kick, the referee blew his whistle and David Raya passed the ball to Gabriel who picked it up with his hands and to be honest that's a penalty. You can't pick the ball up after the referee has blown the whistle and Tuchel was rightfully annoyed at full time saying the referee's explanation was that it was child's play. So maybe we got away with one and that cancels out the Bukayo Saka penalty. Possibly that was in the mind of the referee when Bukayo Saka was in on goal and a penalty could have been given. Anyway, enough about the decisions, let's look at the stats from the match and what we can learn and potentially if today's result was a good result for us. And at full time, Mikel Arteta was on about the key moments in the game and where the game was won and lost and he mentioned Ben White's glorious one-on-one -on -one opportunity when we were 1-0 up and he's right. If we score that, it's 2-0 and we probably go on to win the game 4-0. 
but instead Ben scuffed his lines and missed. And in the Champions League, you have to take your moments. Bayern did that really well today. We gave them two easy, cheap goals today and they capitalized on it and they scored. And that is the margins that can either win you a game in the Champions League or even win you the whole competition. But then again, I think it would be cruel to put all the blame on Ben White, who actually saved us. Sane was clean through on goal, but Ben White slowed him down and was back in time to put enough pressure on Sane to miss the opportunity. So on one hand, we could have been 3-1 down, but on the other hand, we could have been 2-0 up. And that's the Champions League for you. This game sums it up perfectly for us. I think we can be content with a draw heading to the Allianz Arena. Coleman could have won it at the end for Bayern. Bayern could have finished the game with Sane's chance and we could have gone 2-0 up. So when you weigh up the game and look at it from a calculated perspective, the result was fair. And sometimes in the Champions League, you need to take what you're given. League form goes completely out of the window. You even see it with Manchester City today. We know how good a form they're in and many probably expected them to go over to the Bernabeu and win. But that wasn't the case and Guardiola has himself said the Champions League is a different ball game. It's all about the margins. Now let's look at good performances and especially the substitutes again making the difference. I thought Zinchenko played decent when he came on. He made his usual defence splitting passes into midfield, into the pocket. And to be honest, he dealt well with Coleman. I really was worried when Coleman was coming on. I thought Zinni would not be able to deal with his threat. But except on that last chance at the end of the game, Zinni did a solid job defensively. However, what I will say is Tomiyasu has to start at the Allianz Arena. I think Bayern's 1v1 threat needs us to have a fullback that knows how to defend. I think most of the game we may take a pragmatic approach. So I feel like Tomiyasu is our best left back defensively and he is decent on the ball too. So if I'm Arteta, after tonight, I definitely play Tommy, especially with the threat of Kane, who was really good today against our centre backs. And it was probably one of our defence's poorest games this season. So having Tomiyasu there, another big figure at the back, could be of help to us. Now on to the other substitutes and Leandro Trossard again making an impact off the bench. How often have we said this this season? Leandro now has six goals off the bench, which is the most of any player in Europe's top five leagues. And our substitutes really are helping us this season. And it's really good to have players like Leandro to come off the bench when things aren't working. Because I genuinely think Leandro Trossard is our best finisher. His composure under pressure is really impressive. He's also now our second top scorer this season behind Saka with 13 goals. And most of those have come off the bench. So fair play to him. I'm not sure if he deserves to start at the Allianz Arena. For me, I'd go for Gabriel Jesus, who I'm going to get on to in a minute. But definitely Aston Villa on the weekend, Leandro Trossard has to start. Now moving on to Gabriel Jesus. Unfortunately, a really poor night for Martinelli. I didn't think he got into the game at all. Maybe that injury is more severe than we think. But when Gabriel Jesus came off the bench, we saw an energy that was much needed. In 23 minutes, he managed to notch one assist, 13 touches, an 88% pass completion and two key passes. That is the sort of impact you want to see from your players off the bench. He was playing in that number nine position and the Bayern defenders couldn't deal with him. So he has to be a guaranteed starter at the Allianz Arena, but I'd play him with Kai Havertz. The awareness of him to know that Leandro Trossard was nearby is world class and he may not get you goals, but those sort of things we see from him are as good as a goal. And although he wasn't handed man of the match and it went to Martin Odegaard, who again was fantastic, I think Gabriel Jesus' contribution was so significant tonight and I was really happy to see him pressing, enjoying and those touches we were seeing last season, especially at the start before he got his injury. For those of you interested in momentum and the statistics, Arsenal absolutely dominated in terms of field tilt. If you look, Arsenal have the higher tilt, which means we were the ones that were pushing for the goals. Bayern were really pragmatic. And hopefully they come at us at the Allianz Arena because we're one of the best teams when we have to settle into a block and play on the counter-attack. And if you ask me, this tie is for us to win. But 
it is really really finely balanced anyway that's it for now gunners hope you enjoyed and please put a comment down below your thoughts on the game and on the key decisions and until next time see you